sacrifices or offerings are known as the Brahma Yagya, the Deva Yagya, the Manusha Yagya, Bhuta Yagya, and Pitra Yagya. These are the five great Yagyas. Brahma Yagya, or sometimes called as Rishi Yagya also, means the Yagya, we are gaining so much knowledge from the Rishis and from the Vedas. And so you perform that particular Yagya by studying those Shastras and the writings of the various sages. That is how that particular Yagya is performed. That gives guidance to humanity. It's a very important um, Yagya. The Deva Yagya means there will be performance of daily Homa, fire sacrifices, where one feeds the Devatas because the Devatas are the managers of the various resources of nature upon which we depend for our own existence. And so one has to honor that or give something back. Yagya means to offer by performing the Homa, fire sacrifice to the Devatas. That is how the Deva Yagya is performed. Then the Bhuta Yagya, Bhuta Yagya means the Yagya to the living entities, animals, other species of life and so on. That particular yagya is performed by the householders by leaving out some food for other entities to eat, especially when you, because the grihasta means they're rooted in one's place, generally speaking. Uh, we, modern householders travel a lot, but that is not, that is abnormal actually. That is actually a very natural thing. Um, and I guess thanks to COVID, we're going back to a more natural way of living <laughs> and no one can go anywhere. But uh, you're rooted in one spot. So when you're staying in one spot, especially villages, so many animals come around. You, and same animals you're seeing regularly. So you would leave some food out for them because they will be hungry. This is called Bhuta Yagya. And then there's the Pitri Yagya, the Yagya to the forefathers. Uh, by the way, the, the animals provide, um, we depend on them also the different species of life for our own existence. So that is why that yagya is there. Uh, even if you see some stray dogs, if you feed the stray dogs in villages, you will see, then they will protect your house. Uh, some intruders shall come with something, they will give protection. And this way, that's just a simple example, but there's so many symbiotic relationship between the species of life and nature. So we also depend on them. So therefore, Bhuta Yagya is there. Then the Pitra Yagya is the Yagya to the forefathers. So we, are, we have our bodies thanks to our forefathers. And they are responsible for providing the particular bodies. And so they should also be honored. They are honored by doing the, what is it called? Pinda or Shraddha ceremony. You offer some water, some prasad to the ancestors' pictures. Also, I, I've heard that Pitra Yagya is also performed by having children. Uh, because they have given you your body. Now you have to continue the line, not only to continue the line, but also continue the culture that you inherited from them because our prosperity is inherited from the forefathers. And so you have to honor that by continuing the line and also um, the culture. So you have children for that reason. Uh, Grihasa Ashram was for having children actually. And by having children, you also perform Pitri Yagya. Um, and then there's Manusha Yagya or Nir Yagya. <clears throat> this is the last of the five. Where, and the, the main Yagya is this here is you honor the guest who has come uninvited or suddenly. So the Atiti Yagya, it is also called the Titi Yagya. So some guest has come suddenly and uninvited. And so you have to honor that by feeding them, minimally at least offering some place to sit some water, if you can't do that, at least some nice words. If you can't do that in one place in the fourth canto, chapter 22, Prabhupada says you should just cry. If you're so miserly, you can't even offer some nice words, then you should just cry. Um, so this is how the Atiti Yagya, we depend on so many other humans for our existence. Like now, many of us live in cities. So imagine if there were no garbage men, just one, you know, one type of human, the garbage man. Imagine there was no garbage man in New York City, for example, many of us are here in New York, then immediately New York will become within a few weeks completely unlivable. So we depend on so many humans actually for our um, existence and we may pontificate uh, who is better than 
you know, this group is better than that group and so on. But actually all the groups are kind of important um, because we depend on them. So this Manusha Yagi is also required. So basically if you are a Grihasta, daily you're supposed to perform these yagyas, these five yagyas. It helps relieve you from sin because it was also mentioned that in the householders when, you know, cooking and then sweeping and all that, they kill a lot of living entities. And so by doing Pancha Maha Yagya, they're purified from those sort of daily sins that come up in the course of life. And they also purify their mentality by understanding that they are not, a, they're not like a tattva unto themselves, that an independent reality unto themselves, but rather they are a dependent entity, part of a greater whole. And that mentality is, I guess, expected to translate into God consciousness later on, understanding that the jivas themselves are not independent reality, but are part of the, the paramatma. Mamaya vangsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. So this Panchama Yagya is absolutely essential. So if there is some transgression of the Yagya, in the Dharma culture, there will be, there will be some embarrassment. One will feel embarrassed. Why this, uh, or feel lamentation. So Kashyapa Muni is asking if you're feeling lamentation because of having transgressed one of these very important Yagyas to humanity. Now, um, there's another verse I wanted to share from Bhagavad Gita, a couple more verses. I'll again, share my screen. So this verse from Gita here, very important verse, evam pravartitam chakra nanu vartayatiha yaha. <clears throat> so yaha means um, one who na anuvartayati iha, one who does not adopt in this world the chakram, so the word chakram, basically, I like to call it the circle of life. <laughs> chakram means will, of course. So this is referring to the previous verses. I can just read them. So Krishna is talking about, the, the, I call it the circle of life. The circle of life does not run on love as, um, you know, is the modern sort of talking point. But the circle of life actually runs on the strength of yagya. Uh, yagya is what makes the chakra go around, not money and certainly not mundane love uh, in the way that it is ordinarily thought of. That is not what makes it go around, it's actually the yagya. In fact, you may, as just a point of um, thinking, one may wonder what is the meaning of love without yagya? So it is yagya that actually makes the chakra go around. So here Krishna is saying two verses. So all living beings subsist on food grains. So that's obvious, which are produced from rains. That's also obvious in the grain coming from the rain. So rains are produced by the performance of the yagya. And yagya is born of prescribed duties. So where do those prescribed duties come from? Well, their regulated activities are prescribed in the Vedas. And the Vedas are directly manifested from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Consequently, the all-pervading transcendence is eternally situated in acts of sacrifice. So you have God at the top, from God comes the Vedas, from the Vedas comes the Dharma, right? That's what Dharmic culture. From the Dharma comes all the prescriptions of Yagya, from Yagya come the rain, from the rain come the grain, and from the grains come the humans. Not only the humans, all the species, but this is Gita is directed at humans. And then the humans are expected to do Dharma, and then Yagya, and then rain, and then grain, and then um, humans. And then that way the circle is going around, right? That is how it's called the chakram here. So this chakram is established by the Veda, Pravartitam. So evam pravartitam chakram na anu vartayati iha yaha. So one who does not follow the chakram that is established by the Vedas, that is what Krishna just mentioned. Then what is the agharyur? Such a life is sinful. Agha ayu, one's life ayu is full of sin. And indriya arama, and is lived only for the purpose of gratifying senses making money, spending money, making money, spending money, the whole purpose of everyone's life, <laughs> making money, spending money. So such a life, mogam partisa jivati, such a life is mogam, is lived in vain or is useless. 
So that is the main problem today in the modern world that everyone's life is more or less useless. Obviously, because we have not been trained, uh, we don't know about the Pancha Mahayagya, we don't know about the culture of Dharma. So much ignorance is there. So this is, of course, a little bit higher than what we're talking about here. But Rishabh Dev is saying, so long as one does not inquire about Atmatattva, then for that long, his life is defeated by ignorance. But here, we're not even talking about Atmatattva. We're just talking about Dharma, the Dharma Tattva. That also, the modern humanity does not know. So there is a sentiment amongst humans, as we can see um, very much, uh, esteemed in the modern social situation, there's this consciousness that we should do good for others, especially those who are downtrodden. But unfortunately, because we don't, we're not informed about Dharma, the Dharma culture. So our good for others becomes a nuisance for the whole society because it's not directed by Dharma. First of all, the scale is too big. Everyone wants to do a big thing on a, uh, wants to do a good thing on a very big scale. Just like now, if you ask the children, what do you want to be? What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to change the world. Oh, such big scale, it's such small body. <laughs> uh, how you have such a big thing? Of course, because they are watching the movies and everything and everything is always like on a very grand level. On you know, the superhero movies, saving the earth or some movie, changing the world. It's always like a very big, it's like, no, first do Pancha Mahayagya. <laughs> to keep this up daily, it's itself, uh, uh, I can imagine an intense affair. Um, I'm gonna get to this next point also. To do, if you can imagine, especially as householder, if you have to do, first of all, I've not, I'm not a householder, but I've been at homes with children and whew, it makes me, um, grateful, <laughs> you know, to be kind of in my quasi limbo brahmachari status because um, it is a lot of responsibility and more so than the brahmachari ashram. And just to meet responsibilities every single day, just like this bhakti thing, we are often, what is the difficulty hearing, chanting, remember, what is the difficulty? So the hearing chanting part is not difficult. It's that everyday principle <laughs> that starts to wear you down a little bit. <laughs> it becomes challenging every day, every day, every day. So you have all these responsibilities, the responsibilities of Pancha Mahayagya every day. This will see to this will see to social integrity and it will also see to a, a psyche of understanding your relationship to others and honoring that relationship, even on a small scale. But as, as the saying goes, small, small hands make quick work. I think we have a saying like this in the state, small hands make quick work. So in a similar way, if all these small groups, not small groups, even small families, they're all doing Pancha Mahayagya, that helps everybody. Uh, and that way it doesn't have to become like an emergency because of all this useless living, Mogham Parti Sajivati. You know, people living uselessly for decades and decades and decades. And all of a sudden you, you have to try to invest in a gigantic social movement that is bound to fail because no one knows the Dharma Tattva. No one knows about this chakra and how it is actually working. So then it is bound to fail and cause more nuisance. Dukkha, what is that verse? Dukkha Oshadam Ta'api Dukkha. As Prahlad Maharaj is saying, the remedy for Dukkha is itself Dukkha. So that is a modern, every solution that is proposed is itself dukkha. <laughs> there is, of course, suffering, dukkha uh, is there, and they want some oshada, the remedy, but whatever they shall propose will itself be dukkha because they do not know the dharma tattva. And that is the difficulty in this age. Again, parabhavastavarabodha, your life is defeated by ignorance. That is the, the meaning of that first line of Rishabdev's teachings. And so, Obvious, again, so to the point, in the Dharma culture, like Aditi Kashyapa, this transgression of one of the yagyas, Manusha Yagya in this regard, is a very big problem. Uh, it, it would weigh on the psyche of such a Dharmic mind. And so Kashyapa Muni is um, asking her, is, is this is the issue here? So Griheshu Yeshu Atihayo Narchita Salilar Api. 
So he's again describing the homes in which the guests are not, the Manusha Yagya is not honored. So that's what he's describing that particular thing here. So he says, at the home, Griheshu, Yeshu Atihayo, which the uninvited guests, Narachita Salilarapi, are not even offered water. They're not welcomed even with a little bit of water. Then, Yadi Niryanti Te Nunam, and if they go away, then Te Nunam, such a household is indeed Peru Raja Grihopama, is like the homes of jackals. So incidentally, I looked up jackals yesterday on Wikipedia just to see if I could get any insight about that. Not that this is a Shastric thing necessarily, but apparently the jackals are species that live as a pair, largely. And the word that was used actually to describe them was monogamous. They like, I guess they have something like a monogamous relationship and they live in a pair and they build their home and then they keep, you know, and they urine and do other things to mark their territory. And they basically keep everyone out of their particular territory. So I thought maybe there's some relationship why they would be calling here as jackals. Such a home, they're just jackals. They're living, husband and wife are living together. Nowadays, that, even that is not there. But husband and wife are living together and they're keeping everyone out. They don't invite any guests. Any guest comes, <clears throat> they open the door and say, what? you know, in a very heavy tone, scowling in the face. <laughs> or they just keep out, beware of dog. Um, or you knock, they just ignore. So then these are homes of jackals. Um, they do not perform Anusha Yagya. Their life is in vain. Agayur Ijriya Arama. If you're not going to do this thing, generally you have to have guests, householders are, I guess, they're um, expected to have the guests over also. Not only are they to you know, treat uninvited guests properly, but they're expected to have the guests over also. Otherwise, what is the purpose of the house? Then the, purpose, the house becomes a prison in which you try to enjoy the sense gratification. That's the general idea of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So it means you must be having that house only for the purpose of senses, because you do not perform the yagya minimally. Uh, minimally, you should perform. The whole purpose of the yagya and the dharma culture is to control the jivo, <clears throat> jivasa jivanam problem, which means one living entity is food for another. It's a consumption problem, generally speaking, amongst the jivas. So if we don't regulate our consumption problem by dharma, then we'll just end up consuming each other. And we see consumption not only in terms of like actually eating each other, that is also coming. <laughs> Rest assured, that is also coming as Kali Yuga progresses. But we can see economic consumption, how one group tries to consume the other in terms of economy. There can be a, a racial consumption that's been kind of popular thing going on today. So in so many ways, the Jeevas will consume each other if they're not regulated by Dharma. So that is the whole purpose of the Dharma. So you must at least do Dharma, especially if you're trying to do sense gratification, but they will not do. So that means you must be living only for the injya, arama, for the senses, sinful person, useless life. And in this way, um, the home becomes the symbol of the defeat of human life. Uh, this is a very nice verse here. I think you can still see my screen. So this is from Srimad Bhagavatam. Also, anyway, Srimad Bhagavatam is real heavy. This is Srimad Bhagavatam, Priyavrata, verse 1. So Priyavrata was basically sannyasa, and again, he became householder. So Shukadev, uh, Park Shemar, heard about that. He became very bewildered by this. So he asked one question, Priyavrata Bhagavata, Adma Rama Katamune, Grihe Aramata Yamula, Karma Bandha Parabhava. So he wants to know that Priyavrata was Bhagavata and Atma Rama, self-satisfied sage and devotee. So how is it that, again, he entered the house to enjoy? Grihe Aramata. How did he again enter that house to enjoy? And what is the house? Yamula Karmabhanda Parabhava. It is a root cause of the karmic bondage. And Parabhava, again, this word is coming, Parabhava. And Prabhupada translates it here as the defeat of one's human mission. 
So this house, the house will become that for those who don't do Dharma, who don't do, especially they don't do bhakti. So their house is just a jackal. They don't do manusha yagya even. That means their consumption problem will be a very big problem. And their human life will be wasted. So devotees, of course, we don't do the, all these yagyas. So a question may come up. What about the devotees? They also are not performing yagya. So they should also do. <laughs> but it is mentioned specifically, Srimad Bhagavatam, they varshi bhutapta nirnam prachrinam. Right? Nankankaro naya rinicharajan. You know which verse number it is? I think it's 40 something. This one. No. Yeah. Sarvatmaya sharanam. Sarvatmana yasharanam sharanyam gatomakundam parihitu kartum. So the first line is the different yagyas that we've mentioned in the class. So nakankaro naya rinicharajan. So you don't have to, one does not have to be the servant of these yagyas uh, or one, let's say one is adapter to all these entities as we mentioned, but for one who is completely surrendered to Krishna, Sarvatmana, so that means he's offered everything to Krishna, body, mind, words, soul, um, sharanan sharanyam, like fully to Krishna, then gatomo kundam parit kartum then he is not obliged to these yagyas. So devotees have to at least do the Sankirtan yagya. That is what Prabhupada speaks in his purports in chapter three. And they must do their japa, they must do their Sankirtan yagya, they do bhakti. Then if you do bhakti dharma, then you may be released from these obligations because all of these devas, bhutas, pitris, the humans, they're all aspects of the universal form of the Lord. So when the root of the tree is water, then all the aspects of the tree are satisfied. So one has to do full bhakti. Uh, if they don't do full bhakti, then there is some obligation to the yagyas then, For, particularly if one is living in the house or you know living a life where sense gratification is a big element of it. So that has to be regulated then. If you will not allow your bhakti to regulate, then you have to allow the dharmic culture to regulate. Otherwise, agha you, a little sinful life. And how can sinners bring about positive change in their own life? What to speak of the world? <laughs> They're talking about the world, such big goal. First of all, bringing about change in one's own life is a very challenging thing. And how will a sinful person do that? That will be impossible. Mogham uh, sajivati. Such a life will be useless waste. So we don't want to be that. So we have to do our bhakti dharma at least very nicely. And for those of us who are a little bit interested in the sense gratification a little bit more, then okay, some dharma should be there also. Invite guests over, treat the guests nicely, be the honor the, the parents or forefathers. Uh, you should study Shastra every day, a little bit at least, so that yagya is satisfied. Otherwise, a useless life. We, want, we don't want useless life. We want very useful life. Nice life, Bhakti Dharma. So I'm going to stop there. There is 15 minutes left. If anyone wants to inquire anything or add anything or push back or whatever. Hi, Krishna. Thank you for bringing this uh, concept of Panche again, explaining it. There are some questions. Probably you might have answered when you... Uh, spoke afterwards, but I think they have dropped some questions when you were speaking. So if you would like to look at them. Sure. So, so on the chat. Yeah, I'm looking. So AG is helping others in itself. Dharma. Yes, that is Manusha Dharma. Basically, the philanthropy is Manusha Dharma. But that is only one aspect. There are other aspects also, right? One out of five. <laughs> you have to get five out of five. <laughs> Not one out of five, five out of five. So, <clears throat> of course, because people may not know Dharma Shastra, there's a sense in this question that people may not know Dharma Shastra, but they are helping others. And so that is itself like honoring the Manusha Yagya by helping others, even though it's not regulated by Dharma Shastra. The only problem is, Krishna says in Gita this thing also, Tashma Shastram Pramanam Te. 
karya akarya vyavastito, that you must allow the shastra to be the pramana, which means the, the evidence, basically, uh, for d- determining what should be done and what should not be done. So that is a problem, how you will help others. So Prabhupada many times says this, if you do not know what is good, you cannot Emma? do it. Uh, someone needs to be muted. Okay. <laughs> Prabhupada many times says this thing, if you do not know what is good, you cannot do good. And I know, at least when I first heard this as a Westerner, I was just like, nah, no, there's something intuitive, you know, and of course you can do good without knowing something particularly, but Prabhupada denied that. And we generally deny that. How you will do good for others if you don't have proper knowledge. Whatever you are doing for others even that you consider to be good is based on some knowledge, right? That you've got from some place. Uh, even the idea I shall feed people, I shall clothe them, that is some knowledge you've gotten it from some place. So the problem about trying to help others, which is a very prominent speaking point for, you know, it's a proper sentiment, obviously, and it's a it's something that has been very much esteemed in the social landscape, at least in America. But the problem is that they don't also talk about what it means to do good. Like, of course, they just give some suggestion, do this, this is good, but no one questions it. No one, well, that's not true, of course. Um, there's, there's not a very deep conversation that we're privy to in the mainstream to understand what is actually good for others. Of course, ordinary like building wells, <clears throat> feeding people, <clears throat> These are giving charity. These are all, you know, things that should go on. But in order to really know how to do it properly, there were Dharma, Shastra was there. And Krishna is saying, you have to go to the Shastra to have, to understand what should be done, what should not be done. Otherwise you will do nuisance also in the name of doing good. And I, that's what I'm suggesting is happening today. That the, the attempt to do good is itself another, another problem. Dugo shadam ta api some dukkha is there, so they want to do good. They give remedy, but then that itself becomes dukkha. Another problem is produced because they don't have guidance of the Shastra. So helping others is itself dharma, yes, but it has to be guided by Shastra, right? So even I read today the verses from Gita, the d- dharma is coming from the Veda, right? So it has to come, it has to be informed by Shastra. Otherwise, problem. Maybe not an immediate problem, but it will go on increasing. One example of this, this is probably not the best example because it's somewhat politically charged. But one example of, of this idea is like the welfare state in the Americas, just giving the money to people who are considered to be downtrodden. It'd be, so it's like, it sounds like a good idea, you know, rich country and people are a little bit downtrodden. So you should give the, um, you should give the money to the people. So then they have created welfare state, but it's also shown to produce a nuisance because now people knowing that they can get money, they refuse to work or in some demographics, you get a certain amount of money if you have for every child that you have in the house where there isn't a man living there. So that incentivizes people to break up with their husband or man and get the money and have children like this and that and just gather money. So it produces another nuisance. So that is a, I'm gonna call it as a crude example because there could be so many angles of vision with these sorts of topics and you know, with the po- political thing, everyone's like, well, you don't understand this thing and the other. So just, a cru- just to give a sense of what I'm talking about, that is the purpose of the example here. AJ is saying Shastra is confusing. Yes, that's because Shastra is to be heard, right? It is not to be read. Not to say that we shouldn't read Shastra, but Shastra is largely to be heard. When it's said that you should study Shastra, that means you study under the guru. So the guru is explaining everything. And then as you get confused, then you ask questions and then he removes the doubt. That is actually the meaning of study Shastra. We think Shastra study means ordering off of Amazon you know, the Baal's home set, and then begin reading. But how you will understand anything? You, we have no zero context of anything. Just like now, when we, modern people, especially Americans, when we talk about Varnashram Dharma, we don't know what we're talking about. 
it is impossible for us to know. We've never experienced that culture. When we're reading about it, we can get a sense of what it might have been like, but that is the best we can do. So you have to hear from Parampara. They will explain all the things in a clear way. Um, when you just read, you have to read from your own frame of reference, which is so limited. So study Shastra means to sit at the feet of the Guru and hear and ask questions and clear the doubts. Then it would be less confusing. If you go on, go on reading on your own, then more confusing. And Shastra is also Nigama Kalpaturu. Kalpaturu means a desire tree. So everything is talked about in Shastra. So you'll get confused also. Is karma being glorified? Is Gyan being glorified? Yoga being glorified? Everything is mentioned. Bhakti being glorified. Brahmaji, he has four heads, so a very intelligent person. He had to study the Vedas three times, three times to come to the conclusion of Rati, that actually the purpose is Bhav Bhakti. But three times, such four heads. <laughs> He's also considered the having the form of the intelligence, Hiranya Garba. He is called Hiranya Garba. So his body is made of intellect, even. Still, he had to study three times Vedas to come to the right conclusion. Then here we are, Kali Yuga creatures, looking at one time and then thinking we will get Siddhanta. How is possible? So study means sit at the feet of Guru and hear and ask questions. That is study. Otherwise, of course, the confusion will be there. Preeti says, Krishna also told to give up all dharma. So how do we understand? Yeah, surrender to Krishna. What is the difficulty in understanding? Sarva dharma pradit yagya mame kam shadanam braja unto me alone, exclusively, surrender. Then there is no need for all these other dharmas. So that's why I concluded my class with that Devarshi Bhutapta near Nampracha numbers. That if you surrender to Krishna, then you're not considered as obliged to these other dharmas. Or you can say your debts are liquidated huh, by the performance of bhakti dharma. Because bhakti is also referred to as dharma. Even in Bhagavad Gita, Raja Vidya, Raja Kuma, um, Parvitram idam uttama pratyaksha avagamam dharmyam. dharmyam. So it is also referred to as dharma in Gita as well. So this dharma is superior to the other dharmas. So if you're following this dharma, then you're not obliged to the previous dharmas. But if you don't have the adhikar for bhakti dharma, and you don't have the adhikar for gyan dharma, this is also mentioned by Krishna to Uddhava, then you must do these other dharmas. Otherwise, uh, agayu, sinful person, Moga parta sajivati, useless life, that thing comes up. Um, yes. So I have a little. Okay. I got a nice private message that was encouraging. Thank you. Um, Interfaith, we invite anyone interested in helping to share your Christian homeless in relation to the subject of this class. Um, Idea is inviting everyone to come help distribute prasadam because that is performing the Manusha Dharma. So he is putting that in our head. Kashyapa Muni questions his wife. The problem here is due to the home being like that of a jackal. Well, if, because the previous verse, right? He said, did you not do the Manusha Yagya? And now he's describing in this verse that the house where the Manusha Yagya is not performed is like a jackal's house. He's just describing. He himself was gone and not overseeing the home. Hello, yeah. Is there a backstory? No, so that's why... I, I, I don't know the backstory if there is one. How do we see Kashyapa Muni as doing the proper thing if he was? So that's why I just mentioned this also. There are gradation of dharma, right? So when you have Adi Kar for going into Samadhi, <laughs> that's a pretty high Adi Kar, then you are not obliged to the dharmas of Varnashram. So I'll share the verse with you from Srimad Bhagavatam. So you don't think I am just speculating. There shall always be some pramana when anyone's making some point. You don't have to accept anything anyone says unless they give the pramana. That is the standard of that Prabhupada is told to us at least. So anyone is saying anything, they should be able to provide the pramana for that. So I think this is verse 20, right? 9, 11, 29. Yup. Here's the verse. Tavat karmani kurvita narnavidyeta yavata makata shavanadho va shadayavana jayate. So anyway, as long as one is not satiated by fruit of activity, tava karmani kurvita, nanirvidyeta, yavata, then for that long, he, 
I don't know how to non vidyeta yavata. So if he is not satiated by the karma, then tava karma and kurvida, then for that long he is obliged to karma. That is the meaning of the first line. So yavat tavat. For this long, then for that long. That is, these words are always coming together. So non vidyeta yavata. So long as you are not satiated, that this is referring to the gan adhikar. So when you have gana, then you're not identifying with the body. Um, but when you don't have gana and you are identifying with the body, so many desires, you want to be fulfilled and all that. So so long as you don't have that gan adhikar, then you are tava for that long, you are obliged to the karmas. Karma here means varnashram dharma. Or makata shavanado va shada yavana jayate. Yavan, so, so long as you don't have the shraddha for makata shavanadho. Makata shavana means hearing Krishna kata, chanting, adal means etc. Chanting and so on. So as long as you don't have that adhikar, then tava karmani kurvida. That long you are obliged to karma. So here this verse is saying, basically if you have bhakti adhikar and gyan adhikar, then you are not obliged to the karmas of Varnashram. But if you don't have bhakti adhikar characterized by shraddha or gan adhikar characterized by nirvidyeta, you know, where you're just like done with mature desires, then that long you are obliged to the karma adhikar. So Kashyapa Muni has both gan adhikar and bhakti adhikar. So he is not obliged to the karma. So I don't know the backstory and all these things. But um, so he went into samadhi, it seems like for a few years, that's what it, it said at least, which was itself kind of extraordinary to me. But um, because he has an adhikar, so he is not uh, obliged. That doesn't mean that they didn't perform the dharma. So I suspect if he comes back, then he's in the house. Now he's doing the dharmas, but also he can leave those dharmas as well because he has that particular adhikar. Thank you, Shabu. Thank you for an amazing class. I know it's time for darshan. I have a small question, please. Yeah. Like when you say this Nirnam Pitranam verse, uh, it also says Sarvatmanaya Sharanyam Sharanyam. Yeah. The standard is so high. So I can think, oh, I'm a devotee, so I don't need to do all these things. So how while practicing bhakti and when we are not that surrendered, so how do we balance that? Yeah, I you know balance the mm. that word yeah. always coming out. Balance, balance, balance. You know, Sarvatmana yeah, means completely everything given over to Krishna and we're not like that. So when I heard this verse from Ansadu, somewhat recently, I think within six months, he mentioned that unless you're 10% doing that, the bhakti part, then he said, you better do the, especially if you're a householder, then you should perform the duties. Um, at least some of them should be performed because the consumption problem is still there because you have not crossed over anarchnavritti, tanisha, ruchi, asakti. So the, the consumption problem is still there. So that has to be regulated. So how will you regulate it? You can regulate it in your own way or you can regulate it according to some dharmic principles. So um, we should understand, at least general dharma we should understand. It's called samanya dharma. You can see it in seventh canto chapter 11. Uh, there is mentioned the Samanya Dharma. You know, the Dharma is supposed to be followed by everybody, despite Varna and Ashram and so on. So we have a general awareness of the Samanya Dharma and we allow Dharmic principles to govern our consumption issue, which is how I'm using the language there. We have a consumption problem. So we should allow the culture of Dharma as we understand it, which means we should try to understand it more through study of Shastra to regulate our consumption problem and then increase our bhakti. But even if you do bhakti, taktvasa dharma charanambu janare, bhajana pakpo, this verse is coming from Narana Muni. Even if you're like, you know what? I heard this class and yeah, I'm doing bhakti. I'm not going to do the dharmas. And you don't do bhakti fully also. So that is seen as well. So that, someone would say, well, that is a problem. Yeah, that means the individual has some problem in his life because he's now regulating his psychophysical situation. So that means his psychophysical situation will get him into trouble and will complicate his life. But as so long as he does not let go of bhakti, he is saved. <laughs> so bhajana pakko means even if his bhajan is immature, 
And so he gives up his dharmas prematurely, taktwasa dharma, chadanambujahare. And his bhajan is immature. And he also doesn't do bhakti very nicely. And Prabhupada mentioned the poor, poor, there's some attachment to matter or some offenses occur. So his life will get into some complication for sure. But there is no loss. That is what Narada Muni says. There is no loss for that person because he is doing bhakti, such as bhakti's, you know, you can say um, grace and bhakti's power, that still there is no loss. So the encouragement is always do bhakti no matter what. And dharma. If you don't do the dharma, your life will get complicated for sure. You'll suffer. And then that will either encourage you to like get it together or to do bhakti even more deeply. So in both cases, you'll come to the point. So uh, I don't know if it's a balance, but <laughs> that is the answer that I have. Thank you, bro. It makes, it makes sense, especially this bhajan na verse kind of clarify that aspect. Thank you. People don't like to hear it, especially the dharmi people. The pious dharmic people, they don't like to hear these sorts of words. It very much irritates. Also that api chat sudarashara bhajate mama nayamba very much irritates because they're doing nice life of dharma piety and the devotees are being a little bit rascal, you know, or a lot rascal. And then they say, anyway, bhakti, but that is actually coming in our philosophy. So don't do like that. But that's why I wanted to clarify. You may do like that, but you will suffer. But if you don't let go of bhakti, you will be saved. So there is no loss. This is encouragement. Okay, I'll thank you very much for tolerating the switch over and hope it was okay. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna probably die. Thank you so much. Are you all ready?